Hello and welcome my beautiful friends and family. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I just finished up doing my abs and my warm ups and whatnot, so that's why my shirt is all sweaty. I'm about to change before I start this back day, but you came in here because you wanted to hear about have I been able to gain muscle as a vegan or you probably have heard a lot of people say to people who have switched to being vegan, you build all your muscle while you weren't vegan, so it doesn't count. I have a lot to say in today's video, but first, before we get into that, let's go out and do my back day. I'll show you guys what I'm doing right now, and then we will get into that. We are back at the house after the workout and I'm having what I generally have every single day after my workouts. I was doing my smoothie before my workouts, but now I pretty much just go straight to the gym after I wake up and get some water in me, have my pre-workout, which is just some coffee and then some beet juice for the pump and some AAKG. Uh, so yeah, I guess at the moment I'm doing fasted workouts. No specific reason other than just the fact that it doesn't digest quick enough for me to have a smoothie before. So now I have a smoothie after. I have about two to three frozen bananas in there and then about a cup or so of mixed assorted fruits like peach and mango and I don't know whatever else is in there strawberry and whatnot and if you guys saw my soy milk challenge video you know that I've switched over to soy milk because it has hella protein in it it's also really tasty it tastes like ice cream so I use a bunch of soy milk and then finally I finish off with the vivo protein finally I top it off with some chia seeds because then I get a bit of my omegas in there I do about a tablespoon or two tablespoons of cacao nibs just because I like to have little chocolate chips while I'm eating and drinking my smoothie it's really really delicious I know there's like some superpower antioxidant stuff in there but really I just do it because it tastes freaking amazing basically this makes a giant smoothie somewhere a little bit over a thousand calories and then also behind me I have some more food in the oven cooking up so I'll have that after I have the smoothie and work for a little bit I'll take a break eat more food and then can continue to work. But yeah, you guys always ask, what's the best post-workout meal? That's what I do every single day, and it works pretty well for me. Very fast, very effective, very efficient, very delicious. I have now had my smoothie. I've had two meals since then, and I was just basically waiting until the sun was down a little bit more so I could talk to you guys more about this subject today. So I've been lifting for around 11 years. Bodybuilding is like one of my biggest passions, but unfortunately, around four years ago, I started getting this really nagging kind of Thing going on in my shoulder basically what I was doing is I was developing an impingement from you know sitting and editing for so many hours and just going way too hard not being smart about I don't know just like the ways that I was like lifting and just the patterns and things that I was developing <laughs> Now this shot is from late 2016. As you can see, in general, I have a lot less mass than now, but especially you'll notice that my shoulders were quite a bit smaller. When you restrict yourself from big compound lifts like bench, and also when you drop the weight, you lose a lot of your mass over time. Here's another shot from around the same time period, just to show the amount of mass that I had at the time. I wasn't able to lift with the same vigor that I was used to, and as you guys know, it's a big passion of mine to lift, so I was spending a lot more time doing one of my other old passions, which was playing soccer, which is something I still love. But you can obviously see I have a lot less mass in this clip. Here I was trying everything on my own to fix my shoulder. But I didn't realize that it was my body mechanics, the way I poshed myself, the way I used my muscles in a chain when performing a movement that was incorrect. So things like this that generally people go to when they have shoulder issues weren't the thing that would ultimately help me in the long run. It did provide me with some small amount of shoulder pain relief, which I then would go hard again with the shoulders, but end up with the same sort of pains and have to lay off again. Mind you, this whole time I was vegan. 
This is like the coolest thing, dude. Three big progression steps today in my upper body day. Uh, I've been stretching a bunch, doing a lot of rehab work, and I decided I would kind of like test it because I didn't feel any impingement today. And holy crap, dude, I just did lateral raises on the cables. I haven't been able to do lateral raises in a year. It's mind blowing. We're making progress back, son. Now before I get too much farther into this video, I do want to mention how I was actually able to fix my shoulder and start gaining this mass back. Because like I said, for those first two years, I've been vegan for four years, I was not gaining mass, I was losing mass. And this wasn't due to the vegan diet, it was due to the fact that I wasn't able to do any of the movements that I was used to doing as a bodybuilder and I needed to remedy this. So I started seeing a professional, a physical therapist, or I guess I would say she's like a movement specialist or expert. and. Uh, I'm gonna to jump to a quick clip right now of her explaining kind of what we've been up to for the last two years because it has been a long, grueling challenge of getting myself back to being able to do these movements that have ultimately allowed me to regain the shape that I'm trying to gain while also adding on mass in the last two years. I wanna address, we're not necessarily doing physical therapy with you. What we're doing is movement science. We are trying to create biomechanical efficiency so you're not overusing any muscles or underusing muscles. Therefore, we're creating proper joint motion, and that is what's causing you to have better performance, less pain, and we're really in a performance cycle for you. Um, so, where did you start? You started in a, man, if I reach up at any time, it's awful. That's because where your joint was sitting was creating impingement, especially through the supraspinatus tendon and some other areas up in here. And that's because some of your muscles were short and tight and forward, and other muscles were not doing their job specifically to take your scapula and be a part of moving it back and stabilizing that shoulder. So we went through first getting the joint to be balanced. All the muscles working appropriately when they're supposed to work. Then I went into a series of getting you to do the right sequence of stability and motion so that you regain your power. One of the things that happened for you is because your scapula wasn't working with arm motion, when you'd pick something up, you would go forward and up into your trap. Instead of picking something up and initially going back, stabilizing that shoulder and then creating power off of that. What we needed to do is not just get those muscles to work, but we needed to re-gauge your brain and how you wanted to do that when the performance needs get higher. So as it gets heavier and heavier and heavier, your ability to access, no, I stabilize down and come up, is what we needed to do. So in a, in a rehabilitation setting, they like to do lighter weights where, okay, yeah, we got the joint to work, but what we need for you is to actually get into a performance setting where we need to recruit more uh, muscle fiber, we need to recruit more mechanoreceptors, and we need you to be able to perform that over and over and over again in a repetitive pattern so you pick it up and that's what you do every single time. So right now where we're at with you is all the things are functioning, uh, all the things are strengthening. Now we need for you to, to put it into an even greater performance, a faster performance, a heavier performance in overhead motion. And one of the ways we're doing that is to create, create different ranges of motion where you're pulling first, making sure your clavicle's back, your trap is back, your arm is open, and you're able to move through a range of motion and back into that range of motion without ever driving back up towards your ear, which will recreate the impingement. So if we're not gonna recreate the injury, we have to make sure that we are training you in some really small pieces that we can talk about another time, having to do with how each of these muscles function, but you're essentially getting you to perform over and over and over the down, back, and stabilize for power versus the up, and pinch, and that's where you're at. <laughs> you and that damn log, girl. You and that log, huh? They can't keep away. All right, so no more of the stabilizer. It started to kind of like funk out on me, so I gotta fix that. I think I was using the wrong tripod head on it. Anyways, more importantly, <laughs> The point of this video was basically to say that I actually have gone up and down in weight and I have actually had to regain mass that I've lost. Oh my gosh, this chair is sinking on me. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> how low can you go? The low rider. 
is a little higher. Yeah, that was embarrassing. And I can't lie, I actually did go through a period where I wouldn't say I was necessarily depressed, but I was very irritated. Like, I was really mad about the fact that I wasn't able to go into the gym and, and do what I've always done for, you know, up to that point, like six or seven years straight. Like, I, I, I know the gym. I'm not a beginner. And then I'm having to restart as if I'm a beginner, trying to like relearn how to brace my abs and relearn the form on every single exercise that, you know, in my opinion, I had mastered up to that point. So over the course of the last two years, working with my physical therapist literally weekly. So I've gone over 104 sessions at this point. Uh, I've been able to regain a lot of that movement, not 100%. I'm not over there just benching whatever I want to or just going like the heaviest I can with deadlifts and things like that. I'm literally like still regaining like movements and relearning things that I, again, I thought I was an expert at. I guess it just goes to like humble you and show you that you're not always gonna be on the top of your game unless you stick with it and have perseverance. That's another huge point that I wanted to put in this video is like if, if you wanna do something and you wanna become really good at it, it's going to maybe come to you very easily in the beginning, but where you become a master at it, I think, is when you actually have to face the difficulty. Instead of just, you know, working hard and then getting that result, working hard, getting that result, losing that result, and then having to work hard to get back to where you were so that you can then regain more and move forward from where you were. I think that's where you really get tested and that's where I've been tested for sure. And I'm really proud that I've actually been able to stick to it because now I'm like the happiest I've ever been with bodybuilding. I'm so stoked about the progress I've been able to make. I feel like when I am hitting those PRs that I've hit before, it's even more of a PR because I'm also doing it with correct body mechanics, which is really important to me. So over the course of the last two, three, years something like that I have gone from about 176 to 180 pounds to at this current moment in my bulk I'm at 206 pounds and I'm gonna be going up probably at about 215 before I start another cut if you've been following the channel for a decent amount of time you know a year or two I'm sure you've definitely seen me gain size over the course of you know these last two years and just you know pushing myself to get better throughout this whole time and I know you guys have heard this before I know this might be echo chamber for a lot of you guys but I think it's important for us to begin you know bodybuilders and fitness people athletes to make content to show people that you can be on a vegan diet and make progress in muscle building or whatever you know athletic prowess you're trying to pursue and so that's exactly what this video is as well as again to give you motivation to stay constant and persevere through whatever it is that you're trying to become better at because it doesn't always come linear right as much as we'd like it to be it doesn't always come linear with that being said that's all I have for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it I do want to ask you a favor did you like the stabilizer portion of this video where I was walking around and talking to you guys and it was extremely smooth I would like to do some talking videos where I go somewhere beautiful like we have a couple beautiful lakes around here And I just kind of talk with you guys for 15 20 minutes straight You know not a lot of editing just going through a concept going through an idea I personally would like to do it I would like to know what your opinions are if you'd like to see that please let me know in the comments below Anyways, let's wrap up the video if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up Let me know what you thought in the comments below go check out the new apparel and subscribe if you're not subscribed already team beyond the week CT Lift heavy or die Myron motherfucker. Give me out week. CT Lift heavy or die Myron.